What is up YouTube? It's Kingfisher745 and this video is going to be dedicated to Beast, the Horseman of Pestilence, aka the Meta Breaker. Now let me just say the true impact of Beast won't be fully realized until the PvP tournament, but it's certainly already safe to say that he's bringing back old heroes, weapons, and really has the potential to shake things up in PvP. I'll be getting into that as well as a whole lot more in this video and many more to come. In fact, after this video I'm going to also do my podcast segment, All Hail the King, on the From the Helicarrier podcast, focusing on Pestilence and one of my favorite team ups for him. So make sure to check them out on Twitch TV at 4pm Eastern Live on Tuesday and or you could find the podcast also later Tuesday night on thehelicarrier.com. On the following day I will release my video part that goes along with the segment. So if you haven't been keeping up with All Hail the King and the From the Helicarrier podcast, you're really missing out. Now let's go ahead and take a look at what this costume will give us. And then after we unlock it, I'll go ahead and show you this costume in PvP with some of my early team ups. Now Bleak House and Catch-22 are both really nice passives, but I want to focus on the final two things. First, Faustian Bargain. Allies that have all of those debuffs, now apply them when they attack. So just remember that when we get to our first team up. Allies also take reduced damage from damage over time effects. And last but not least, Paradise Lost. It suppresses most effects to prevent or remove debuffs but it is important to note that's for allies and enemies alike. Then with this costume you also get access to new abilities. Well they have different names and several different effects. For example the jungle changes to Heart of Darkness and now it has Nano Plague in addition to being stealthy and causing generalized. And by the way Nano Plague is really amazing it prevents most beneficial status effects and deals damage every turn. Then Pestilence's level 2 ability is called at the Mountain of Madness. It's quite different from War and Peace which is Beast's normal level 2 ability. This level 2 is a debuff on all enemies that causes mind control and fumbling. So those are also some pretty nice effects especially mind control. Mind control has a 50% chance to make your enemy block one of their own attacks. When this procs it can cause a huge swing in momentum in the battle. Then Beast's level 6 is called the Mask of the Red Death. It hits all enemies, it's a quick action, it's also subtle and it places Ice Awake Contagion with a countdown of 3. This contagion does pass back and forth but when the countdown stops it causes an outbreak of several debilitating debuffs on whoever it's on. So this is another ability that you need to keep in mind. And lastly, his level 9, it's called Jekyll and Hyde. It exploits attrition, exploits protection, and causes off balance and cornered. Now this alternate costume comes in both Tactician and Infiltrator, but I'm going to choose the Tactician first. But just before we get into the PvP action, I do want to say a few things about Beast's potential. His Paradise Lost opens up enemies and yourself to be afflicted with tons of dots and debuffs. This completely goes against the Mystic Shroud, Scroll, and all those old things that have been dominating in PvP. They simply won't work against the Horsemen of Pestilence. Your dots and debuffs will go right over Mystic Shroud and if they use the Scroll of Angelob, it won't remove anything, at least debuff wise. So what does this mean exactly? Well you can bring out tons of old weapons such as the Hot Shot and the Hard Knocks and you can bring out your Chaos Shot or even an old favorite of mine Dark Sigil and not only that you'll really boost characters like Dr. Voodoo and Nico and those that have a ton of different debuffs, dots and those that rely on debuffs such as a Paragon Exploiter or Exploit Attrition character. So my opinion on Beast the Horseman of Pestilence is that he's a meta breaker and my hopes couldn't be any higher. He just opens up so many possibilities and brings back characters that weren't viable or weapons that have been buried in your inventory for so long. 
And one of these characters that he makes an absolutely amazing team up with is Satana. And that has to do with that Faustian bargain. Satana has a dark pact, so she raises your stats when you're affected by Dizzy, Exposed, Slowed, or Weakened. She also causes these effects on your entire team. So remember, she causes them on your team, and you benefit from them. Now look at Faustian Bargain. It says allies that have weakened, exposed, dizzy, or slowed apply those effects when they attack. So in essence, Satana puts those on your team, you benefit from them, and then you also put them on your enemies when you attack. The difference of course being they do not benefit from them. So let's go ahead and give this team a try in PvP. I haven't used this character in a while, but I'm going to start by using her level 9 and put Weakened on my team. One of the main reasons for this is because I want to go ahead and put Weakened on the enemy team. I definitely feel the need to lower Havoc's attack. It's kind of funny that they're also using the Horseman of Pestilence. It's the first time seeing him on any defense, and it's pretty early on, so this is unusual. This was one of my first team up shortly after they released this costume. And now my team does have weakened, so we're ready to put that on whoever we attack. Their beast starts with their level 2. That's kind of scary because we do have mind control and fumbling on us. Now I will start with our level 6, and we actually don't mind if we get hit with that outbreak, because it will help us out with Satana's dark pack. Next, since we do have a tactician, I'm going to single target attack Havoc, and then I'll gain tactical maneuvers. But first, let's go ahead and put Weakened, Nano Plague, and Generalized on Havoc. And now we can use our level 2 and place Mind Control on their team. Hopefully they'll end up blocking some attacks for us. Mind Control definitely seems to kick in, but Fumbling, that's another matter. I guess we'll just have to see if that actually works for us this time. Their agent uses the Blackest Void which is pretty annoying because we can't get rid of that disoriented. So let's go ahead and use our short fuse, so now we have enraged. Then I'm going to use the shepherd staff. And lastly, we have to kind of worry about using the axe. One of the reasons is because we are disoriented, and I don't want to hit our team too hard if we do hit them. So instead I'll use the voodoo staff, and I'm going to use it on their agent. But first, let's go ahead and look around, and there you see they do have Relentless on their entire team. So I guess they anticipate a hotshot being used. Alright, and there you see Fumbling Proc, so there's Did Proc on us, and we end up hitting our own Satana. So that's pretty unfortunate. Now it's going to be the enemy Havoc's turn. I'm hoping that he doesn't use his level 6, but at the same time, part of me hopes he does. I hate the exhausted part, but the pressure points actually would be a good thing for this team. But hey, he hits his own teammates, so even better. Now I'm thinking that it's time to use an AoE attack, at least with Satana's first attack. So let's go ahead and use her level 2, and that should do a decent amount of damage on the opponent. It's going to apply Dizzy to all of our teammates, and it's going to put Weakened and Meld Armor on all of them. Alright, so let's hope they don't dodge, and they didn't, but it didn't do much damage at all. Now that we can access a different summon attack, I'm going to go ahead and look at her level 6. You gain access to different and more powerful summons, depending on which debuff Satana has on her. So if she has Bane and Sin, you can call Dark Invocation. This is going to be a pretty awesome summon for this situation. So we'll just move on to it. There it is, it hits all enemies, it's catastrophic, exploits corruption, and then it's going to cause dizzy and weakened. And it also is going to place exposed on our whole team. And that's a much better hit than our level 2. Now their entire team is at about half health or lower. And that's even with the spirit field weakening it by 30%. So here goes the evil pestilence's turn. And then it's going to be two attacks for the good guys. He does use his level 9, but it doesn't do too much damage to us. And now, like I said, we're going to get two attacks with our beast. 
Then we can also gain tactical maneuvers as well, so this could be quite devastating for their team. I'll start by using Jekyll and Hyde on their agent. But there goes that mind control, so we do hit Satana instead. She dodges some of the attacks, and she really isn't that badly hurt. Now it's time to hit that blaster, so that way we can gain an extra turn, and at least we're going to have a chance to take out their agent. So let's try this again, Jekyll and Hyde on their agent. And we do hit them this time, taking them down to 6,540 HP. So he does live through it, and he's going to attack us. But look at all those debuffs on him, he's not going to do that much damage. If he hits, he will pass on that contagion though. But even if Outbreak does go off, it's not going to be that big of a problem. Now my agent, he's not going to get a chance to act, but we do get Satana. She has that level 9, which has Soul Drain. It also has Fatal Blow, so we're going to kill their agent and heal a ton of HP back. So watch this regen, 10,000 and then an extra 20,000. At this point in the battle, we have it pretty well in hand. We have high health on all three characters, and they only have their beast left with 22k HP. So hopefully a Jekyll and Hyde will finish it. Now that's really close, 665 HP, but one more hit should do it. So I guess we won't mess around and we'll just hit him with our agent and the Warbringer Axe. Truthfully, this should be an epic overkill. So let's go ahead and see how much we can do. 54,581. Now moving on to the second and final battle of the video. It's already underway. We cut out some of the boring beginning parts. And they are using Rescue. So Rescue, meet Pestilence, your worst nightmare. I also brought back some old friends. We're using the Hotshot, the Hard Knocks, and Ghost Rider. So this is another really exciting character that we can bring back. It's been a long time since I've used them. And let me tell you, the fact that his sin isn't going to be removed is pretty amazing. I used to love killing Quicksilver with Ghost Rider because he'd have so many stacks of sin. And when you pair him with Beast, the same thing can happen again. So I for one can't wait to punish those pesky Quicksilver teams with Ghost Rider. And look at Ghost Rider, I just love that move right there. And he looks incredible. We're also going to get a follow up attack. And right away, even though Moon Knight dodged a ton of hits, he is quite hurt. Well let's see what Moon Knight does on his turn. He only has one stack of Retribution. So he's not too scary right now. And he does have three of the nastiest dots on him. It looks like he's using Blood Moon on our agent. Who protected against it. But unfortunately, we don't get a big and fast proc. Whenever that happens, it can be such a huge game changer. But we are getting a Bleak House proc from Beast. So he's going to put Oh My Stars and Garters, and we get Epiphany. The next attack will be a critical hit. Now the first thing we're going to do with Beast is use his quick action. And then it's time for our level 9 Jekyll and Hyde. I'm going to place off balance and cornered on rescue and hopefully do a lot of damage. Not a bad first hit on her. So there you see cornered off balance and she already has soul fire. Not to mention the ISO 8 contagion. And the countdown gets all the way to 1 and she's going to pass it on. So that is unfortunate. And her turn's only halfway over. So here let's see what else she does. A Reconstruction Matrix, and I believe that's going to be a quick action, so here she goes with a second flyby attack. This time she does miss with it, so it's our agent's turn, and I'm going to use the Warbringer Axe. I'm hoping to finish the agent before their next turn, but Moon Knight steps up to protect, and not only that, he dodges the attack, so talk about some bad luck. It doesn't get much worse than that. Their agent's going to get a turn after all, and she's holding the Neurotrope. But first, they use Short Fuse, and then the Light Fantastic. But as you can see, it doesn't remove any of those debuffs, 
So with Ghost Rider, I'm going to use his level 9, and that'll consume that mirror reality. He also will gain some vengeance stacks, and it looks like I need to go after Moon Knight, because his retribution is going to climb really high right here. So it's time for Moon Knight to get a pen and stare, and that should do plenty of damage. So it did 28k, and we didn't even need our follow up. Next with Pestilence, I'm going to use our level 1 and generalize and place Nano Plague on Rescue. Mainly I just wanted to hit her with Nano Plague. So there you see some of the dots ticking off and she starts out with another flyby attack. And by the way I can't even tell you how happy I am about Beast and how he shuts down Rescue. Because probably my biggest problem with her is the amount of time she takes. She really drags out a match, so the less rescues I see the better. In this current spec ops there's also a bunch of exploiting shield weapons, so that will also make a rescue team pay, including Magneto, and people using the Savant Spear. Alright so Beast gave us Epiphany once again, so I'm going to use Short Fuse, and then we'll get a guaranteed critical hit from the Hotshot. That should do quite a bit of damage to both of them. It kills Rescue and hurts their agent severely. So this one's about to be in the books and as it ends I do want to let you all know that Rogue will be next as Famine and that should be released pretty soon. We'll be taking plenty more looks at all the horsemen including teamed up with each other. And I do have to say I really love teaming them up together as well. Also, make sure you tune into that From the Helicarrier podcast. I'll announce that amazing team up with Pestilence. Lastly, I want to thank you all for watching and ask you to please like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, good luck and take care.